My name is Claire Simpson and I'm an architectural technologist and BIM coordinator and my background is in architectural technology. So I'm going to be taking you through today's, today's presentation. So anyway, back to the main point. Um, I'll start to um, just talk about, you know, talk about understanding Revit. What I'd like to make is that Revit is it's a building mod building information modeling tool. So it's, it's not a CAD or drafting tool. And if you try to compare it to a CAD tool, you, like you quickly become frustrated. Two strongs in the end, it is primarily used to create a virtual building. Present their real life counterparts and, and manage the information about the project software. And one of the first things that you'll notice is all these dialogues. That's just because of the view that I'm in. But um, that's, you know, so you see all these dialogue boxes, and that's because the objects in the model are effects for gathering digital information about the project. It's a it's a visualized database, so don't let these dialog boxes put you off. You don't have to fill all this information in, in immediately. The dialog boxes are there to fill in information when it comes to hand, so you're continuously building up a single structure and managed database of information. So when you're working in Revit, um, you're more focused on building the virtual building and less focused on the drawing. So I'm just looking at this slide here. Um, process which is you know you're, you're you're drawing lines and text and you're 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 inputting all, you know information to 2d drawing schedules and spec specifications you're 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 drawing drawings to use the building um, you know within the bin process you know you're inputting information into this and you're building up a virtual building and this is going into you're building up a, a database of information and from then you, from there, you're getting, uh, you're getting, your, you're extracting your views, like your 2D drawings, your schedules, and then, so you're, like you're building the building, um, to produce drawings. I'll just show you the next slide here. So yeah, see, so we've built up our model. We're taking views from this, replacing, replacing, um, you know, all of these views onto our sheets. So, you know, once you understand that you're involved in the process of building rather than drawing, and the tools are the tools are very intuitive. So, for example, you're you're placing, like you saw in the video there, you're you're, you're placing building elements like walls, windows, doors, and floors rather than drawing lines, arcs, and texts. You know, I think you know often when you're wondering, wondering how to do something in Revit, you should ask yourself the question. How would I build that instead of how would I draw that? I mean, that'd be more helpful in, in finding your answer. Okay, so and obviously when you're starting to learn Revit, it's the same way really. I think with um, with most most packages out there, you know, it's is a whole new language to learn. Describing which to which to which way Revit works, we're going to look at um, some concepts today. Basically, we're going to be looking at um, the database structure, types, view controls, pulling the data. So I mentioned to you there um, about you know we're building up this virtual build, build building, you know, and it's we're essentially building up a database. So what does this database do? So it structures information makes this information consistent throughout it. You know, about this is, you know, how, well, you'd, want, you'd ask yourself, how, how does Revit organize this? So, um, like the database, at the top of the database, you know, the thing is, is controlled by families. So all elements within, within the building, like see your walls, floors, doors, you know, these are all families. Organize this by, uh, um, by dividing it up into categories. 
on the left hand side, sorry, the right hand side of this slide, that um, we've got three different categories here. We've model categories, which is essentially our physical elements, your walls, doors, and floors, roof, windows, annotation categories. Data. So this is um, your, your, your tags, dimensions, and these are these are view specific 2D elements. Model elements. These would be 3D. And then you see here that there's another there's another category for import. So if you're importing your CAD files or your MicroStation files, they, they'll all. And then there's also you see down here within each category you've got so your subcategories categories more powerful and allow the control of the graphics and um, you know an element with finer precision so I'm just going to show you how this works I'm just going to go in into um, here my manage tab I'm just going to open my object file and I'll be talking about this in a few minutes you can see here that I've all my all my elements are stored in here and they've been organized into their different categories. So I have my model objects, which is, as I said, my my doors and floors, furniture. And I have my annotation objects, which is all my tags, my 2D information. And so if I have a CAD file, file um, it'll, it'll come in here. Um, about this subcategory. So I'm going to scroll down here to, oh, I've gone past it there, but, um, and you'll see that when I expand this panel here, um, all these other categories have appeared. So um, within the door, even architrave, your cavity closer, elevation swing, mullion, and glass glazing bar. So you can see that there's a number of elements within this, which, you know, it gives me further control. And we've got there's things in here which will allow us to control it, like the line weights, but I'll, I'll get into that later. And if um, if you import a CAD file, the layers within your CAD file become sub subcategories, and then these can be assigned new line types and everything. So we've had a look there at the base and how it's structured. So we've got our families, and these families are categorized. So the next thing, um, you know how these are all organized. You're asking to, you know, you might be asking yourself, okay, well, um, how um, these um, families? It does this by using parameters, material and shape, and look of a base type element can be changed using parameters. Of a, like a parameter of a family that could be, and um, so you could have your see if you, on the right hand side here you have a table. It could be your height, your width, your length. Could be the material or any other defined characteristic. You know types can vary, um, in while each is derived from the same family. So if you just look to the right here, you'll see that, um, category is I've is here is for this is from the furniture category but there's I have a family of tables here but this is actually just this is one three different types within that family principle would apply to doors and windows we could have one window family and there could be six different types of windows within that and um, the most important part of parameters is that there's there's two different types I'm not expecting you to remember this right away, but just you know, just become just it's important to become aware of these things. So your type parameters affect is a type parameter and an instance parameter. So your type parameter affects all instances of a type in the same family used in the model. It affects only the selected instance of a type in the model. If you just look to the right against these tables, so you see that all these these three types of tables here and a type parameter for these could be the width if I have two types of this see type one here if I have two types of that and I change the width 
the width will update in both an instance parameter as a material as a material parameter on these two tables so that if I actually have two separate materials I can do that and it won't affect it won't affect the type I'm just going to demonstrate this for you a bit further or this door here and you'll see in my properties box on the right hand side of and you see you see all the information I have about this door and that it's concept single door so I'm actually just going to copy this across So when I select this door, I'm just going to click Edit Type, and you'll see that a dialog box comes up. This is a Type Properties. Underneath this, you'll see it is a Type Parameters. So these are the Type Parameters that have been added into this into this family. So, say for example, get to this door, say to 1200, and you just watch the two doors that I place side by side there in the background. I'm just going to click Apply. Doors. Have actually updated, so this is that's a type parameter. I'm going to say OK to that. Again, my in this dialog box here, and um, these are instance parameters, so I can add a frame material to this. So if I say, for example, I just want to say frame material is timber, so I'm just going to type in timber here. Okay. So I've applied a frame material to this this door on the left hand side. So when I actually select this one, you'll see that you know, there is no frame material. That's that's just that's that's only affecting the instance of this of this type. It's important to kind of um, keep keep going over that as you as you as you know continue to learn Revit because it's an important uh, important concept to, to grasp. The next thing I'm going to talk to you about um, in Revit is families. It seems to be trying to get away from me there. Um, the types of, of um, families within Revit are families, component families, and in-place families. And all of these are obviously, as we discussed, are categorized under model annotation. Um, an annotation. So I'm just going to talk a bit about what kind of families come under the model category. Families first. It's related to your major building elements, so your your walls, your floors, your roofs, your ceilings, stairs, etc. And these are created in the context of each project using predefined types. So they're actually already built into Revit. So if I just go out here to my my ground floor, and um, like for example, like your, my walls and my roof and everything. I'm just going to click on a, on, a, on a wall here. Any wall, I don't know. I'm not really fussy on what, what wall this is. Sorry, just, I'm after losing my properties box. Just one. Oh, yeah, it's back now. So if I select this wall, you can, and I just click on the type selector here, and just you see that, you know, this is, this is a specific template, but if you just have a, a default template that Revit will, uh, you download with Revit, you'll be given a couple of types of walls. Say, for example, if you, you're saying, okay, well, this isn't the wall I want to use for my project, you can simply just edit the type, duplicate it, and you can start to edit the structure of it. So you can start to add in Whatever, whenever, whenever your wall building may be, and this is the same principle applies to your floors and your roofs and everything. Just going to get rid of that. Yes, yeah, so as I said, um, is it created and duplicated, created by duplicating existing types and editing the parameters. And say, for example, if you if you did um, a project and you, you made six new wall types. You can you can um, use there's a there's a there's an option here called transfer project standards and this basically copies selected project settings from another open project to the current project so you're not just restricted you know if you created all of these walls you're not you're not restricted to just contain them within this project you can move them to others 
families. Um, so the next type of family to be about is, um, is component or standard families. Different to system families, they're not actually housed within Revit. These are um, created in an external environment, so um, using family editor. When you think of component standard families, I always like to think about you know things you might deliver onto um, your your windows or doors, things like that, or your furniture, like your tables and chairs. Um, so then you know all these elements are obviously they're assigned to a category, so that you know when they're brought into Revit, um, you can schedule them together. You know Revit will know what what they are. They they have their own file format extension. So they're like a dot they're, they're a dot or FA file and the dot or VT files. And so your family files, your or FA files, they're all obviously all external files and they can be housed, you know, wherever wherever you need your external hard drive or your server. Um, and can be loaded into a project for use at any point. Um, so I'll just show you. So if I go to my ground floor, you know, you're not you're not really left. You, you, within Revit, there's the option to actually you're given. I'm just going to file new here. I'm just going to say new family. By default, you're actually given different family files. So you can say, for example, I wanted to make it a new door. So I'm going to. And, um, I've been given a starting point here, and if I open this, just I'm just opening it for you, and um, you can start. You're starting off from this basic template, and you can see up here where my cursor is. So like this can be loaded into the project whenever it's ready. And also the important part is that because this is a door, it's a door template, and um, this is automatically been assigned to category. So if I click up here to my family and category button. You see that it's been assigned to a door category. So when I load it into Revit, Revit will know, Revit will know what it is and will know where to put it. X out of that just for a second. That's basically um, uh, the component families. The next, the next type of family I'm going to talk about is an in-place family. This uses the, the family editor in the context of a project environment. So this would really be um, only for the bespoke elements. So the example that's actually used in the wiki help is this reception desk. So it really have you something really kind of specific to a project. Based from project to project, but they can't be saved as RFA files. You know, if you are, if you have to kind of do an model in place, that you should limit it because you do because it will, um, it will will actually slow down, slow down your model. And I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to go back to my ground floor. I go to my architecture tab, and you'll see that. Um, here, so if I just click on the drop down box there option here. Okay, so you see the reception desk coming up and so this creates a component that's unique to the project. So like this. You can draw anything. Revit's a dialogue box box pops up and Revit's asking me um what you know family category and parameters. So I have to assign a category category to this. Start to draw I want to start to draw my reception desk. I'm gonna go down here. And I'm going to say, oh, this, okay, well, this, this is furniture. So I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm being asked to name it. So I'm just going to leave this as furniture one. I'm just going to say, okay. Um, so now that we're kind of in this sketch mode here. So we can, we can, we can create our, we can, we can start to create our um, desk. And then once it's created, because we've assigned, because we sorry, because we've assigned a category to it, 
um, within my project browser here, um, which is essentially like a file manager, I can drop down here on families, furniture. Like we haven't finished this yet, but um, you can see that because we've categorized it as furniture, it's going to go underneath this heading here. So, you know, you'll be able to schedule it and everything. So that's, you know, it's really important to put a category on something. So anyway, that's how, that's just your model in place. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about um, families that come under the annotation category now. This can be both system and component families. Um, some of these, that some of these families are housed within Revit, like for example, um, levels, grids and sections, these are already built into Revit for you. Loadable ones, which would be your system, sorry, your components, which you can also call loadable, and um, they could be like your, your door tags. So you'll see just this image here, uh, sorry, the right hand corner, and um, that th there's a door tag. So this door tag has been created in an external, in the external in the family editor, and it's been given labels. So it, um, it's gonna it's gonna read, and then it's gonna read the fire rating. You know these can these are all created and loaded in, um, and these these um, component families they only appear in the view in which they're placed. There are only two. 2D view specific elements. Annotation families such as sections, levels and grids, they have special properties. They're 3D graphics but they have 3D characteristics and they appear in multiple views and can be edited from multiple views as well. So just if I go to my ground floor here, I'll draw just two, two extra grids. I've just drawn two grids here. Plan I've drawn drawn these grids in. They appear in all these. Like if I go to my first floor plan, it's appearing in my first floor plan. If I go to my roof level, so, and if I go to my south elevation, it's actually it's actually appearing in my elevations as well. If I go to my ground floor, and I take section. Why there? If I take a section. This section, you'll see that my grids appear in section as well. So you're not having to redraw these things all the time. And also that if you know, say if my numbering, just for example, if my numbering on these is off, I can click on this and I can say, well, I want this to be grid one eight and grid one nine. Say my roof plan again, and you'll see that it's update. It'll update everywhere else, um, and it's the same with levels. If I go to my south, my south elevation, and I'm just going to roof level here. I'm just going to change. Say I want this to be eight instead of eight point four. It's going to say okay. That, and um, this is this has changed the height of my roof level, and if I go into my north elevation. This has been carried through throughout. It's basically our annotation families. I think I'm going to talk to you just a bit. It's just about views in Revit. So we started our, our, our ground floor plan. So really, each view in Revit is is a type of family. So um, our views can be controlled globally. So or they can be controlled from our properties palette. So you see that when I go into my ground floor here, and um, you have all these kind of the option you can control your detail, the detail level of control, your scale, you can control your graphic display options. Like, do you want shadows or lighting or you know, etc. So what I mean by controlling globally, I'm kind of moving into the next section, which is I'm talking about how. Revit controls controls um, its views, so the, you might be asking yourself, okay, I've seen how 
you know, I can I can put all these you know all these elements bit and build up my model, but you know when I go when I go and create my views and I put my views onto sheets, like what will all what will all this stuff look like and how can I control that? <clears throat> Two main things that will control are you know how we how our views look in Revit, which is called object styles, which we opened up earlier, and our our visibility graphics. So our uh, visibility, oh, sorry, I'll talk about our object styles first. So basically these two things, they control how and what information is displayed each category and subcategory. So if I go, I'm just going to talk about object styles first. I'm going to go to my manage tab and I'm just going to click on object styles here. Dialog box again. And basically this is our, this is our default settings for, for our project. We've got a lot of different categories which I talked about earlier. And then within this we've all we've got our, you know, doors, walls, floors, etc. So you see that say if I go down to doors here, you'll see that weights of projection and cut, cut line colour, line pattern, and even material here. So these can all be controlled from within this within this dialogue box. Like I can just click into where doors is here. I can just click into that and I can just change the line line weight to whatever suits and then like there's more information and stuff in about um you know what what exactly how what how thick are these lines like in your in line weights here under your additional settings in your managed tab but we get into that in a later in a later chapter just letting you know that that's there you know these are your you know, as I said your global settings so say for example I'm, I'm going to go back in here to my to my ground floor. Where did these things droop? Um, your global settings set up, ready to go. But you might want certain things just for one view. So there's a, there's a thing called visibility graphics, which can be found under your view tab, and also by keyboard command VG. But I'm just going to go through to the view tab at the moment. So if I click on visibility graphics. You see that dialog box pops up. That's really similar to the object styles. This is basically um, overrides. It overrides your object style. So you can go in here. You can you can switch on and off things. You can make them half tone. You can say I'm just going to go back up to my or again. And so it's like my door. You see, I have the option to override like all. The lines and everything. I can go in here and I can change the line weights. I can change the color. If you know, it gives you further control over over. Be putting, you know, what your sheets will look like at the end of the day. The pretty pretty two um, powerful things within Revit: your your object styles and visibility graphics. So the next, the fi next and final thing I'm going to talk to you about is just how Revit kind of manages and controls the data that we're inputting. Um, and Pat, Pat would have mentioned some of these things earlier within the, you know, in the video. So, so it's just like the, re um, the relationships elements, you know, like a change everywhere, everywhere. Um, we can see here in this example on the slide that walls can be attached to floors. And so, like, and then when the exterior wall is moved out, the floor adapts, adapts, and automatically, so does, so has the room tag. So I'm just going to show you that briefly. I just go here to my architecture tab. I'm just going to create a wall. I'm going to create four walls here, and I'm also then I'm just going to create a floor, just quickly. With all these things in in the next few chapters. I'm just going to finish this floor. I'm just going to go to 3D and I'm just going to and tile my view so I can see both. And I'm also going to place a room in here. If I zoom in here you'll see that my room is reading 64 meters squared. Select this wall, I'm going to drag it, drag it out. That my floor has updated with 
with the walls and my room area has updated as well. So this just this is just an example of how how the elements can relate to each other. You know, things like this can be very useful if you've if you've a large building and you know something changes. You know, you, you don't have to go like especially with you know attaching floors to walls. You don't have to go and change you want to say ten floors and um, repetitive process that sometimes we might face with um, with with CAD tools. Next thing I'm going to talk to you about is My, Pat mentioned this earlier as well. So um, basically, constraints. It's the application of dimensional rules to the design and embedding design intent into the model. See from the example here that I've used a dimension. The, the dimension tool has been used to constrain a door, and the internal wall has been moved. And the door, because of the door, has been constrained to it. It, it'll move, it moves with it. Um, this could be, you know. Things like this could be good for compliance with with regulations, and you know if this is done at an early stage, it'll eliminate the need to for constant rechecking to make sure you know that all your um, your model elements, you know, make sure they haven't been moved. Um, I'm just going to go. I'll go to the ground floor there. So you'll see here that we have our thin lines. It's a bit better. See here that we have our door. I'm going to turn my detail on to fine as well. We have our door and our wall. So I'm just going to click on the dimension here. Modify. So you see that when I click this dimension, you see there's a constraint button pops up. I can just click on this. Sorry, it's a little more like a lock. I can lock this. It's actually, um, if I move this wall, Door, as in the as in the slide there, the door is moving with it. Just keep these dimensions here, because it might kind of crowd up your crowd up your drawing, make it look a bit messy. So you can, I can just delete this. And you see that a, a dialog box pops up saying that even though the dimension has been deleted, the element is still going to be constrained. So you've got the option there to unconstrain it, um, or you can leave constraint. So say if I want to, I just want to leave a constraint. I'm just going to say OK. Go back and just click click on this click on the door again. You see that a kind of a temporary dimension pops up, and and the and the constraint is. So I've got you know you have the option there to unlock it. Tool and Revit. So that's basically and um, summary. That that's basically. For this webinar, um, is you know I'm you're not expected to know all of this at the at the beginning. It's kind of next it's next to impossible. Um, but uh, yeah, the main thing is is that you're aware of all these different things within Revit and you're aware of how it works so that you can get the most out of it.